So the first Resident Evil was inspired by Capcom's own game called Sweet Home, which was released in 1898. Even though Resident Evil shared a similar playstyle with the first Alone in the Dark in 1992 and Resident Evil coming in four years later, the title eventually tanked the survival horror scene and all the games that came in after were pretty much considered as Resident Evil clones. So I thought, why not look for the closest Resident Evil clones I can get the play on them for? How are you guys doing? My name is Doc O'Bell, and these are five Resident Evil clones to platinum. Starting off with number five, we have Cannibal Abduction. Puppet Combo's niche circles around the early PS1 era, and just like its other title, Murder House, Cannibal Abduction is also heavily inspired by Resident Evil, having the same weird tank controls, fixed camera angles, limited inventory space, and your classic Resident Evil puzzles. But instead of the flesh-eating horde, this game has the Texas Chainsaw Massacre feel to it by adding a killer roaming around the house called the Butcher. You're playing as Henry, a young man who stole his dad's car for a little joyride until it broke down in the middle of nowhere. Good thing an old Samaritan offered to give him a ride and to fix his car in exchange for fixing his cabinet. Obviously, after agreeing to it, our protagonist with one brain cell has found himself locked in. And now he has to escape the house, which is pretty much the premise of the game. And honestly, this game isn't hard at all with your character being able to withstand an ungodly amount of hits. And the AI for the butcher struggles at times, unless it's part of the game where you can hide in corners, but I don't think that it is. But there were moments where the butcher was literally blind. But you know, I like to live dangerously sometimes. He won't see me here. He has a sack in his face, he can't see me. I am one. I am one with the cartons. If I don't move, he'll never know I'm here. I'm pretty sure he's just looking at me like, really, dude? You think I'm that stupid, dude? I feel like he's confused right now. I feel like my random actions broke him. Broke his brain. Which is funny because this guy actually is the most realistic version of a masked serial killer. Like, how can you even see through that? I don't know about you though, but if I was wearing a whole mask on my head, my vision would be killer. With that being said, the only trophies to note that could potentially give you a hard time when going for this Platinums are the trophies Safe Play and Hardcore. Safe Play acts like a permadeath run on another game in the game called The Night of the Scissors, where you play as a burglar, but after breaking in, now you have to break out because of a serial killer roaming around the building trying to, quite literally, cut your balls off. The annoying thing about this is that you can't get damaged at all, so if the killer happens to even graze your skin, then then you're going to have to manually exit out and restart the game for the trophy to count. The easy part for this game mode is that it's super short and your guy doesn't run out of stamina like in Cannibal Abduction. The puzzles doesn't change either, so if you know where to go, it's only a matter of speedrunning through the whole thing. Trophy. <laughs> One part to note here is that in one section where you have to tiptoe past a bunch of hanging scissors, because if you happen to touch one of these things, it's pretty much game over. But once you get over this part, it's pretty much just grabbing one more key item and hauling ass towards the gate. Cool. Alright, that was that trophy done. Okay. Now for the hardcore trophy, you need to finish the game on the hardest difficulty. There's a couple changes here compared to the easier difficulty, and that's the fact that the killer now leaves traps behind. And these traps are ginormous, so it's really hard to not hit these things, unless you're getting chased of course. I'm still alive? Ow! Again, this man is very resilient to getting butchered. Oh, that's crazy. Huh. Get j
Not only that, but the killer now barricades hiding spots where the only means of getting rid of these things is by using a hammer. Which brings me to the other thing that they added here, and that's three inventory slots, opposed to four. So if you're playing through this game for the first time, then expect to run around the house going back and forth to your toolbox where you can store your items at. Because let me tell you, if you do not know the order of the puzzle, there is no way in hell that the three inventory spaces is going to be even remotely close to being enough for you. And lastly, your stamina bar regenerates extra slow now. So it's hard to run around getting things done because you'll definitely need the stamina just in case the killer spots you. But these are the only hard trophies to expect in this game and even with everything weighed against the player being a puppet combo game it's still really short and you can pretty much get the platinum trophy at around the four hour mark scared the mess out of me what the frick? in number four we have daymare in this game you're playing as three different people all has different goals but going into the same destination in the end trying to survive from what seemed to be a normal day to a full-blown zombie outbreak it surprised me on how well written this was sure it's not oscar worthy or anything but when you see this game and how janky some things look it really throws you for a loop and this game is more of a Resident Evil 6 clone, and a lot of people will say otherwise, but personally, dare I say, the better version of Resident Evil 6. Now now, not saying that RE6 doesn't have its upsides, for example, Leon's segment is hands down the best chapter in the game still. The only problem the game had was it wasn't even a horror game anymore. I guess if you like your quote unquote zombies to have guns, oh, and they evolve too, I guess. Like that's cool, but I bought Resident Evil for the zombies and horror, not to fight the gosh dang Decepticons. And by golly, that's where Damer came in and absolutely tried to be the successor of what could have been the best Resident Evil for its time. And they almost pulled it off too, but the game is far from perfect and it does capture that overran zombie town vibe and sometimes that's all we need for it to feel like a great zombie game. I mean, the game eventually had a sequel, so they're doing something right. In terms of trophies, however, not only does it have a speedrun trophy, but also a permadeath trophy as well. But this isn't what's hard about this platinum. No, what are you talking about? No, because you can 100% obtain these on the easiest difficulty. The hardest trophy for the plat, and probably what's going to hinder a lot of people's progress, is the trophy Slaughter. And this is to beat the game on the hardest difficulty, Daymare Mode. In this mode, enemies are more aggressive, ammunitions are scarce. What, what do you want me to do? Five out of ten my ass, dude and enemies are made of concrete while you're made of a half-eaten marshmallow. Be right back. I need to use the restroom. Puke my guts out because of this game. The regular enemies you can finesse, which is always good, but what will probably make you lose your mind are the boss fights. Most notably the final boss. If you want to talk about bullet sponges, look no further than this wannabe nemesis. He's free! Never mind, he's stuck again. Oh my god, is he dead? This is the worst game ever. <laughs> oh, hi. What the fuck? What? Oh, dude. Oh, my 
god, dude, screw this game so much, bro. Are you f I thought he was dying, I thought he was dead. This whole fight took me a huge chunk of time, and honestly, I was really enjoying Daymare until I had to fight this piece of work. But once you've gotten past this obstacle, you can pretty much cheese the rest of the trophies all the way to the Platinum Trophy. The Thank you, Jesus Christ. Undeniable. Screw this game. Fortune Screw it! The gold. I accomplished my mission at the first light of dawn. And for once in my existence. And number three, we have Signalis. I'm not even going to try and explain the story for this one, because even if I wanted to, I don't know what the hell is going on here besides us waking up on a crash ship and now we have to look for our protagonist, this girlfriend or wife, I think. It's because this is one of those text only games where you actually have to read in order to understand what's happening. I know there are a lot of people who enjoy reading, but there's also a lot of people who just want to play the game and not sit there reading a book in a video game. But I'm like a 50 50 when it comes to this. However, I'll read the dialogue fine, but when it comes to logbooks and diaries, I just can't. It gets too boring for me. And I want to say that out of everything on this list, nothing even comes close in terms of difficulty. Signalis is not a walk in the park by any means, and in the game, expect to get rocked at every corner, because there are a lot of enemies here. But in terms of it being a Resident Evil clone, this game has everything from limited inventory space, the safe points and safe rooms, and the really complex puzzles. Even if Silent Hill started as an RE clone anyways, Signalis does have more more of a Silent Hill vibe to it than a Resident Evil one. From the weird looking monsters to pretty much the psychological horror aspect of the game, it screams Silent Hill more than anything. Ow, okay. Please perish. Can I just stay here and just do this? Or do I have to like... Oh my goodness, I'm out. Oh, I didn't mean to grab that. Now for the trophy side of things, Signalis has a whooping 13 trophies, and this also includes the Platinum. And the majority of these you'll get naturally, but the hardest trophy here is called Uberleben. This requires you to finish the game on survival difficulty, which gives you the OG Resident Evil style of inventory and difficulty. Only this game cranks that up to 10. This makes the enemies in this game unforgiving, where you really have to choose your battles. This difficulty had me sprinting all over the place just so I can avoid combat combat, and it's rare for me to have a full health too. Unless I'm also just dumb, but the puzzles are pretty hard as well. But if you're looking for a good challenge and some classic survival horror, then look no further because Signalis is here to cater to your needs. Let's freaking go. Verse Petchen. Uberleben. And Ak Aktong. Watch me as I butchered every single thing in there, but juicy platy. Yeah. In number two, we have Tormented Souls. You're playing as Caroline Walker, investigating the disappearances of two children which led her to a hospital. But an ominous letter leading you to an abandoned and very ominously looking hospital, it wasn't really a surprise that she got knocked out cold as soon as she stepped in. Damn. I mean, what do you expect? You're, you're kind of breaking and entering. Oh no, it's a hospital, never mind. Weird way to treat your patients. Playing Tormented Souls hit pretty much every note on the classic survival horror genre. And instead of zombies, you fight a horde of cripples this time. There's also an enemy here you'll encounter later on that's kind of like our now cliche unkillable boss roaming around where all you could do is run away from it. This thing actually caught me off guard and gave me the biggest jump scare of my life. Ah! Dude, ain't no way that actually got me. <laughs> this thing is all sorts of creepy and I was already tense the entire time because I was also going for the untouchable trophy. And this is for not using any health items. I also did this along with Amnesia for not saving your game, which counts as a permadeath run, 
and anxiety for finishing the game in under three hours for the speedrun trophy. I was doing pretty well until I started making some minor mistakes, which accumulated later on, so I had to bite the bullet and heal up, since I didn't want to randomly get hit and have to start over. Which does make this the harder trophy on this list in my opinion. I say harder, but the game itself isn't that difficult. Enemies go down in a couple hits, and there's probably only three enemies max per room, so nothing too crazy. Some might say that permadeath is harder, which is also right. I just went with a no healing run because you absolutely have no room for error. And with only a limited amount of saves, if you're struggling enough, then you're gonna have a bad time. Again, the game is not hard at all, so none of these should pose a problem unless you're going for the no heal, no save speed run like I did here. Since I did end up failing my no heal run, I read that this game had a debug menu mainly used by devs, but you can also use it on the console. This is just for people who just want the trophies or if you're like me and you don't want to do a whole playthrough again just for that one trophy. All you need is a keyboard and type in ZEFCKL ZEFCKL. It does take some time to know what any of these means and how to get it to work, but you can pretty much cheese the whole game with this. I wanted to experiment and see if the trophy would pop still and it did, but use with discretion since some of these codes straight up froze my game. A lot of people will frown upon this, as they should, but hey, you paid for the game so do whatever you want with it. Let's go. Easy. Easiest trophy of my life, honestly. Easiest plot right here. Let's freaking go. Cheese always wins! The cheese! And lastly, in number one, we have Alyssa. This is personally the best Resident Evil clone on this list. Like, when you look at this game, you can instantly see where the inspiration came from. It is the perfect clone from the PS1 era of Resident Evil. In this game, you're playing as Alyssa. You are an elite royal agent sent to comprehend the criminal who stole some very important blueprints from the Emperor. Eventually, you'll end up in a mansion overran by puppets. And I just want to point out that if you're looking for some real nostalgia, like PS1 Resident Evil Director's Cut nostalgia, this is a must buy. Because I'm not sure if they did this on purpose, if not, I apologize in advance. But the voice acting here is absolutely terrible. I personally found it hilarious on how bad it is, but it made me enjoy the game more, which was surprising. So you defeated B? Well done. There, behind you. Hello. Now you can bring me your two twins. Yeah. What? After you tried to kill me? And you who killed me? You don't look so dead. The boss fights are pretty cool as well, maybe except for one boss fight that threw me for a loop because of how random it is. What are you talking about? What in the world is happening? Huh? Wait, what? <laughs> Magnificent. Very impressive indeed. What? Your strength that has survived so far is certainly an obstacle. However, I have been endowed with great power. I am literally invincible, and now your end has come. <laughs> what the hell? Just a fair warning for everyone trying to attempt this, if you check the guide on PSNP, a very detailed guide might I add, so props to the person that made this. But there are a lot of missables unless you don't really mind replaying the game at least 5 times. And unlike the others on this list, this game has an RPG element to it, where you upgrade your character by buying augmentations and the like. And once you beat the game, it automatically overwrites your save and puts you on New Game Plus. Doc, isn't that a good thing? Well, no. 
because this game follows the annoying format that Souls games have. So every time you finish the game, all the enemies becomes harder. And I don't think there's a cap either. So when I finally beat the game, I was already at new game plus four or something. And they were packing a punch, let me tell you. Which now leads me to the hardest trophy on this list, and that's the Save the Dolls trophy. For this trophy, you can't slay any enemies, just the bosses. Doc, can't you just speed run through the game? Well, yeah, I was getting to that, and that's why I also recommend doing the speedrun trophy along with this, literally after you beat the game the first time, to avoid dealing with harder enemies. It does get tough, because the one thing I loved about this game is that the enemies doesn't come back from the dead, but the game does add new enemies every time you progress through the story. But when you're on your pacifist run, these enemies just bundles up to where it gets really tricky running past everything. So running around actually gets riskier the longer you play, especially with the rifle puppets. There is also a somewhat bugged trophy, which gave me a heart attack, and this trophy is called Fashion Expert. The one thing every trophy hunter is scared of are bugged trophies. And for this trophy, I had to collect every costume in the game, but after collecting my last one, the trophy didn't pop. I'm not sure if this is an actual fix or anything, but I did delete my save, re-downloaded it from the cloud, and ran the game again. But after purchasing my last dress, there still wasn't any trophies. So at this point, I already accepted that I had to start a fresh game just to unlock everything again. Which would take me another 15 hours or so. Or just wait for another update. But as soon as I bought something, and in my case, the teeth key, the trophy popped out of nowhere. Which was a huge relief, as you can tell. Oh yes. What the hell? Oh, sick. Let's freaking go. I thought my trophy glitched. So if anyone has a specific trophy glitch out, try the steps I did and just buy something. Or to be safe, buy the teeth key. Besides that, it was just a matter of cleaning up the rest of the miscellaneous trophies, and that was the platinum. Here we go, baby. Bing! Oh yes. Trophy. Weapon expert. And we're done. Let's freaking go. Yeah! Yeah! And a milestone, what? Oh, easy. Bonus one for you guys, we have Crow Country. This game recently came out, but from what everyone is saying, that it is another Resident Evil-like game. You're playing as Mara Forest, looking for the lost theme park owner named Edward Crow. This game has a pretty solid Metacritic score, and PowerPix did do a guide for this game and gave it a 3 out of 10 difficulty. So it doesn't look all that difficult to plat either. But that was the video, what did you guys think of my list? Also, would you want me to do a Crow Country video? Let me know in the comments below. And with that being said, until next time, this has been Doc O'Bell, and I hope everyone has a phenomenal day. Trophy!